Hi, and welcome Hi. back to another episode of Hot Comics. I'm Lysandra Vasquez. And I'm Brandy Younger. And today, we have one of our favorites. <gasps> Lace Larrabee! Lace Larrabee. Uh, you, if you are not familiar with Lace Larrabee, or if you landed on here because you saw her in America's Got Talent, welcome. We're happy to have you. Uh, like I said, she's on America's Got Talent. Yep. She is a, she's been a comedian here. Ten and toured years. all over for over 10 years. Yep. She's highly decorated, but she's also the founder of Laugh Lab Comedy and... Chidi's podcast. She also has a podcast. And I'm just, we're just this telling you this up really front. Long intro. It's a really long intro because this is a really exciting guest. We are so excited. I just let you go. I just let, I, there's nothing more. Guys, let's get to it. Enjoy. All right. Uh, well, welcome. Hi. Lace, we love you. Oh my God. I love you both so oh much. How are you? Welcome. I'm so good. I'm so I'm... excited to do your podcast for the first time. I know. Us too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, definitely not for the second time. Definitely not re recording. <laughs> definitely not re recording no. because I guess I ruined the first one. No, we had technical issues. That's okay. uh, what we, what, yeah, the That's technical me. issue was actually the cameras, <laughs> but we figured it out. Yeah. It's good. And so we thank you for, uh, <laughs> for being back. <laughs> You're lucky. I only come back once. So yeah. officially, what is your hot topic? I did bring you a hot topic because it is very topical. Uh, hey, I love that. Hey, to my life. Yes. Um, as your, as you probably mentioned in the intro mm -hmm. via my writer, uh, mm -hmm. I am currently, <laughs> I'm currently on America's Got Talent. I am Yay! on uh, season 17 of America's Got Talent craziest thing i it's still like mind-blowing and i'm still waiting around to find out if i go back to the live shows yeah uh which let's hope but um while i was on america's got talent mm -hmm. i got heckled <gasps> from sofia vergara the best heckle that's right the sexiest heckler in the entire world <laughs> you literally can heckled die me. happy i can die ha that's yeah. fine i was so f everybody's like how do you feel about sophia i was like yeah. It's the greatest thing. Like, yeah. I don't ever need to say another word. She could just talk in place of me. <laughs> yeah. She's for the, the cutest. For the rest of my life. Yeah. She's the absolute <laughs> cutest. She's amazing. She's so funny. I, I loved making her laugh. Uh, and I knew she was laughing because it was impossible to not stare directly at her and yeah. her She's beautiful bosom. Hello. Yeah. Her beautiful bosom. Yeah. Um, have yeah. you ever been huckled before? Uh, I, mean, I have. Yeah, of course. You've been doing yeah, Of course. course. I just... <laughs> Has, is this new? Has this been a new concept for you? You know what's funny is I always tell students because obviously I teach Laugh Lab. That's how I met y'all, mm -hmm. and I always tell people like, don't worry about ever getting heckled. Mm -hmm. It happens mm -hmm. so few times. Like right. it's not, but it has happened to me. Like I try to not scare everybody and be like, it'll totally happen at most shows that you that you do. But yeah. yes, I've been heckled so many times. I think my favorite. There's a couple bad ones, right? Because not they're not going to all be Sofia Vergara. Ugh, um, that's a ten out of ten. <laughs> that's a ten it out really of ten is. heckle. Yeah. Yeah. Ten out of ten heckle. <laughs> um, sometimes it's an angry old Vietnam vet. Okay, so that'll happen. That's happened. Who has to get dragged out by security <laughs> mm. and then proceeded to um, find my email through my website and email me threatening um, threats. I mean, he sent me threats for like weeks. Don't through do there. that. Don't do that. That's a bad. That's a bad heckle. That's. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Some heckles are a little bit easier to deal with uh, mm -hmm. because it's very obvious that this person is miserable in their own life. And I think mm -hmm. one of my favorite ones is a few years ago, there was, there was this table. It's clearly their first time down from the suburbs. <laughs> no offense. I live in the suburbs myself, but I know these people. I smell them from a mile away. <laughs> no shame. No shame. Uh, they smell like Scentsy. Um, <laughs> so she... <laughs> So she is with her friends and, and I guess partners, uh, and they're all sitting at a table. They were talking the whole show and I'm yeah. doing like 45 minutes. Like I'm going to say for a while. <laughs> okay. And I, that. It, you know, at first you try to let it go. You get a little heckle, you get a little too much talking and you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to be nice. They'll stop. Yeah. They keep going. I'm, I'm going to say something else. This time I'm going to get a little ruder. By the end of it, I was like, could you shut the fuck up, please? <laughs> I was like, and they're like, we're going to leave. And I was like, I would prefer you leave. It's honestly better if you leave. Yeah. And the staff told them to be quiet, too. And I guess they were like, oh, we haven't finished drinking our pina coladas. So we got to stay because, of course, that's what they would drink and they would get drunk off of it. And uh, so on the way out, though, like on the way off the stage, she's still there with her friends. I'm walking past the table and she is actively calling me a bitch. Love while that. I'm walking by. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I hear her <laughs> and I ended up tweeting this later. It, I'm going to be honest. I may have had a couple drinks and I don't know if I said this directly <laughs> to her face or not, but I damn sure put it on the internet. That's why I remember. Great. 
was my favorite comeback. Um, let's just say I said it to her face. This is what I said to her face. I said, <laughs> hey, I might be a bitch, but I'd rather be a bitch than a bitch who her one night out a year that she has, um, she wears khakis. <laughs> And that made me so happy because she was legit wearing khakis. I want to say they were like Capri khakis oh. too. So I, nothing made me happier than that comeback. Oh. I'm so your proud of it. one night out, that's the... That's your the, one night out. Your one date well, night out a year. if you spill your pina colada on khakis, it's like it vacation. blends in. It's like vacation. <laughs> So basically, like she really was yeah. out there, you know. It's like it's like her annual work trip for Roden and Fields, you I know. Just... This like lady today clearly part of a lot of MLMs. I just she only sells things yeah. to her friends and yeah. family. Uh, yeah, so which is to... so funny. Okay, so I just recorded an album. Yeah, and I had a heckler there, kind yeah. of. Yeah. I didn't know about okay. it because so what you shut it down. So, so what happened was is that she was recording her album at the Punchline. It was the second recording of it because if you don't know, when you're recording a comedy album, you do multiple recordings, so you make sure you get the best take. Blah. Anywho, so I was at her second recording of it, and there's she was crushing, killing on stage at the punchline, just like really nailing. And then there's this like woman, a uh, young lady that's just like chatting, like chatting with her boyfriend. She's like, nah, 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 nah. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. Me and me and I, my friends that were sitting next to me, other comics, we were like looking, we're like, hmm, maybe she'll shut up. But all of us were just like giving her like. That's what like you the, always think, the, though. The, the, the yeah. death stare, because you're like, yeah. okay, stop. they're they're gonna stop, and then she just like, I don't know. She was at the beginning of a very long journey. <laughs> <laughs> she was at the beginning of a very long story, and so I was like, no, oh, this this chick's gonna keep going. Yeah. And so after after a minute, I'm like, oh, she's not gonna stop, and it doesn't seem like anybody at the punchline or anybody's gonna say anything. So I I go up to her. And she was like so surprised that I like was addressing her. She's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, hey, listen, I'm like, this is a comedy album recording. <laughs> She's been working on this for years. I need you to take it down. <laughs> and then she was like, uh. and I was like, yeah, this is her life's work. Shut it down. <laughs> and then like I walked away uh, and then. All of a sudden, I was like, I felt powerful. I love you so much. I felt powerful. Maybe the only time I felt more powerful was when I was dressed like Kris Jenner, but um, (laughs) for Halloween once. And then, Uh, oh, um, you're not doing it now. Oh, sorry. I'm just that's just what I take with me as my Mm -hmm, spirit. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But no, uh, I I I sat down and I was like, I wonder, like, but she shut up, which is great. But then I heard, then she like walked away and left crying, which was honestly. Gotta love it. Like a gift. What a treat. What a treat. And then what I had a treat. A cu- a cu- I'm just <clears throat> sad I missed the girl that you heckled out of the room. Yeah, I love it. She started with a soft heckle. You took it to a hard heckle. Yeah. And it ended in tears. And that makes me happy. I heckled the heckler. You did. Was she wearing khakis? Uh, no, she had, she had, she had yeah, she was wearing <laughs> internal khakis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was wearing future khakis. She drove back out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, she's, she had, she had khaki energy. She, she, had had big khaki she was energy. planning for her role in the suburbs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She, That's, she cried all the way there. Yeah. Yeah. So she had a drive. You've been, <laughs> you've been doing comedy for such a long time. And I know that as a work, like as an artist, you have like, you know, I know you worked at a bar. Did you have any other like other gigs like that I did I yeah. and I not only did I work at a bar I worked at so many bars so when I tell people that I bartended for 12 years in Atlanta they're always like where as if it was one place <laughs> I'm like not one but that's a career okay and that was it was ne- never felt like a career <laughs> to be honest but uh I think my favorite my favorite bar though that I worked at it is now a chain and I'm not going to mention it but um it's Ooh. a Tex-Mex chain it uh, started in Atlanta Mm -hmm. And I worked at the very, very first one. And so it wasn't as common, right? When I was there and Mm -hmm. people would go kind of destination, honestly, sometimes they're like, oh my God, it's so neat. It's like Texas and Mexico mixed together. (laughs) And it wasn't. And it was owned by all white people. (laughs) I'm like, it's not at all. But, uh, but my favorite, like our main item was, it was tacos. (laughs) Tacos. Y'all heard of them. Yeah. You're familiar. I think so. Yeah. Once or twice. A taco. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So I think my (laughs) absolute favorite question, and when I say favorite, I mean, it would make me look for places to crawl up onto the roof and throw myself off of, (laughs) was every single day a customer would go, okay, but um, 
like um like what size are the tacos and i was like the tacos the tacos on the 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 it, the 85 percent of the menu the taco the, their taco size <laughs> i like this like like a like a taco like i don't like a like this but like folded <laughs> but like a and they, uh, yeah but like it could be a different it couldn't couldn't be a different size if it was a different size it'd be uh, i don't know a tortilla chip or a burrito uh those are different things okay and if it were in between it'd be an enchilada it's not a taco if it's not a taco size and it's folded in half like a taco like this and I would have to do that back and forth, but this would always be inevitably <laughs> the same person. This would always be the same person who, when they walked in the front door from the outside, you yeah. know how there's like an outside and an right. inside. Yeah. Yes. They would walk in from the outside, from the parking lot, walk door. in the door. The hostess would go, um, inside or outside seating. And they'd go, what does it feel like outside? <laughs> And if I would catch it being at the bar, like two feet away, I'd be like, you mean the outside you just came from second mere seconds ago. So you're wondering what the patio that's on the parking lot feels like from the parking lot you just left. Well, I mean, it could be different. No, if it was different, it'd be air conditioned and it would be inside. That's where it would be. That's where it would be. And then they'd sit at a table and go, what size is the taco? And that's why I drink. (laughs) <laughs> but before <laughs> before that job i had a lot of bad jobs i mean I, we could list all i and then multiple times in my life i had i had more than one job uh, at one point i was mm. bartending at applebee's i mm. was a telemarketer and oh i was God. babysitting a few nights a week for a dude who totally wanted me to have a threesome mm. um uh yeah with with him and his many girlfriends so mm. there was that that never happened but uh he definitely wanted it to happen but I definitely needed that money. So mm. yeah, it didn't mm-hmm. stop it too much. Uh, telemarketing was fun. I think it set me up for stand up comedy. Oh. Um, specifically Hilarious. set me up for like ambush open mic stand up comedy. Word. It's a different, it's a because different Because it's animal. coming at you. No mm-hmm. one asked for it. People are just <laughs> trying to go about their night. I'm just trying to eat. They're just trying to eat, whether it's at a restaurant <laughs> or at home. They're just trying yeah. to eat. And someone calling them and asking them if they want to take a survey for a recent uh, car service they had feels the same as just trying to be out and about enjoying yourself in or out of khakis. Yeah. And hoping that comedy doesn't start in the corner of the room. Like it felt very yeah. similar. Yes. Yeah. So it, was, it prepped me. It prepped me for that. I think so. Yeah. That, that- it prepped me for doing comedy at people. <laughs> that's unsuspecting whether they shut me down or not i was gonna keep going <laughs> i have the microphone i have the headphone i have the headpiece because <laughs> I, I did I yeah uh and i think my favorite job though it was actually this is legit the last job that i had before i like went to comedy full-time mm-hmm. was uh i was a wine distributor i was okay. a wine salesperson oh, you. a lot of fun yeah, right of a little classier felt a little classier sure. than bartending okay yeah. so got to dress up got to wear some it's business, same business cash yeah. yeah same neighborhood talking to bars going in but you need to taste the wine of course oh my god because you have to taste a product you have to taste a product and so when you look at it on tv when people taste wine they spit it out um but I didn't, uh, because that's gross <laughs> and not classy. So I didn't want to swish it around in my mouth, get my right. teeth purple, and then waste that time by spitting it out. If you're going to have purple teeth, yeah, I want to be a little drunk. Right. So I would, you drink a little here, drink a little here, drink a little here. The best part of the day was the video game that I inevitably found myself inside of on my way home um, every day called uh, Let's Not Get a DUI. <laughs> so, and I didn't. I survived. Kids. Yeah. Don't drive drunk. Don't, don't drive drunk. Don't drive, no, we're not. Hey, condoning. I'm not saying to do it. I'm saying yeah. I did it. That's all. Yeah. Learning from your mistakes. And I yeah. made it onto AGT. So listen, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> made it on America's stage. <laughs> made it onto the world stage. Yeah. And I used to drive a little tipsy. But don't do it. Don't do it. But don't do it. Spit, don't swallow. Spit, don't swallow. <laughs> well, Just I good mean, advice for all the kids. Right? I, yeah. I think that that's the safest advice we can mm-hmm. give. Yeah. Yeah. It's not rude if you just... It's not rude if you swish it around your mouth a little bit before. Yeah, you get the, you get the taste, you appreciate it, you show mm-hmm. the value. Mm-hmm. Show and, the value. And then mm-hmm. you spit out the value. You guess the vintage. <laughs> if you just go... Mm-hmm. 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 Tastes like grape. 
Mm, did you have asparagus? Mm. <laughs> this one has notes of pineapple. You like pineapple on your pizza, don't you? <laughs> gross. It's so gross. <laughs> this is not safe for work. Yeah, no. This no. is oh, absolutely. No. This is a family podcast, right? It's yeah. It's, it's marketed to specifically children. This is actually children. an open mic that <laughs> we are ambushing. Yeah, you right. you're yeah. Not but speaking good. of people who don't mind whether you spit or swallow, mm-hmm. Jared, your husband. Yes, you met him doing comedy. I did meet him doing stand-up okay. comedy. So mm-hmm. we met the sixth time that I was ever on stage. He was the special guest in town from LA. Okay. And, wow. uh, <laughs> and I had like heard his jokes before. Yeah, I secured the bag. I had, I'm just sitting here in jealousy. So just I'm keep so talking. sorry. It's and okay. so he, he was on the show. He was so funny. I was smitten immediately. Um, and he had, God, he had oh, this one bit where he imitated, um, a, a, a dinosaur. <laughs> and I <laughs> I la- it came out of nowhere because he does this like loud like screech and it's like this half it's all about share and it turns into a dinosaur but it's the funniest most unexpected right. thing you I ever th- I didn't know the, how the joke went yeah. and I cried laughed so hard I fell out of the seat and was like lying on the floor like Aww. crying laughing so yeah he got me there right he really? got me with the jokes he's hot um, and here's the thing, the, the one show we're going to get a little too sweet. I'm so sorry. It's okay. a little sweet, right. less we're funny, sweet more here. sweet. We love we're love sweet more sweet here. Um, we, we, is love real? This will, we're about, we're to, about find to find out. out. It, it is. So out of thousands of shows that I've done over 10 plus years, there was only one show that my grandparents ever, ever saw me perform at. And it happened to be that night. Shut oh up. God. Completely randomly. They don't even live in town. Like they I had driven in to chills. see me do stand up. And, uh, so they were there that night and after the show, I'm flitting around talking to people cause I'm so excited. It was yeah. just a fun night. It's sixth time doing comedy. You're still very excited about it. Sure. Yeah. And I look over cause I'm like, Oh, I got to make sure that I introduce myself to this guy before he leaves. And where is he? But at the table talking to my grandparents, shut up. <sighs> He's just sitting there in betwixt them, just chit chatting. And my grandpa, it should never be left alone to talk out loud to anyone in public. So I'm standing from across the club like, this is not safe. This is unsafe. I need to go over there and take care of this. And I'm like, hey, 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 hi, I'm Lace. I was on your show. He's like, oh, I saw you. You're really funny. And I'm like, (laughs) me. It's like, I know. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not funny. My grandparents, they're terrifying. And I don't know what they've already said, uh, at this point. Yeah. And he's like, no, they're great. I'm having a blast. He's like, they're so funny. And he sat there and talked to them. And then afterward we went over to the diner and, uh, had a fish sandwich. Oh, is that a metaphor? For it is vagina? not a metaphor for my vagina. Okay. okay, great. Yeah. Could be great. Yeah, it could be, but it wasn't, it wasn't, mm. but yeah, that was the very first time we ever met and, um, fell in love very shortly after. Oh. And, yeah, I know. I he, know. For him to be a comic and a good guy, and we're still married, and he got us a, a nice house in the suburbs. It's he really brought the tartar sauce. Or, didn't ding ding ding! He? He really did. <laughs> I brought the fish sandwich, and he brought the tartar sauce. Mm-hmm. He really did with a brioche bun. Your fish sandwich brought the boys to the yard. <laughs> Brandy, you gonna be all right? Not the very specific. <laughs> It's so gross. So why is there relish in it? (laughs) So it's a rare comedian love story. It's a rare. It doesn't happen. And it's two hot comics, hot comics who got together and made hot, sweet love and now have a hot, sweet life together. How long did you guys date before you got engaged? Oh, Lord. Uh, So we met 2012. We got engaged 2017 on the road doing shows. We were in Austin. Got engaged. He still to this day, I'm not even sure that we're actually married because he didn't actually ever propose to me. (laughs) Yeah. So there's still that. (laughs) He just slid a box across the table after dinner one night while we were drunk. (laughs) And uh, in Austin on a rooftop, it was beautiful. There were string lights. I should have seen it coming. And I didn't. And he just like pushes it. And I was like, huh? And he's like, huh? (laughs) and i was like i think you have to say a thing you have to say a thing you got to say a thing some some formality he's like you know what it is (laughs) so some guys are wordsmiths on stage and not they can't be good at everything they can't you know then it's okay so he slid it across and you said yes but he slid it across and i saw it and you know i 
I said, yes, it was, it was beautiful. I mean, I do make fun of it on stage a little and mm -hmm. listen, but here's the thing. He yeah. did say he's not that attached to the ring and that, and you know, maybe year five, Yeah, mm -hmm. I can upgrade. So I'm going to get remarried. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. He, uh, so yeah, we got engaged in 2017 and then we ended up getting married in 2018. So however long that math is, what is that math? Five years. We were together five years oh, before. Cool. Yeah. I have, I don't do well without Excel. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Uh. Um, but yeah. And, uh, the funny part about the ring is like, he's not good at jewelry. Um, he's my good. mom, my mom knew that like, I don't even think he picked it out. Y'all, I think if I lined it up with like three other rings, he mm -hmm. wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> and I wear it every <laughs> single day. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it's cute. It's a vintage yeah. ring. My mom <laughs> knew. I'm cueing the cameraman that's not there. <laughs> Come here. Over here. Come in. Come in. Come in. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Come in. Um, can you get a close up on that? All right. Thanks. Man, Steve is not even here. Sleazy. How does he? He's, Steve is playing Sudoku. <laughs> you gotta fire this dude. He is not. Steve is right there. He's yeah. not paying attention. <laughs> Albert. That's our executive producer, Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so my mom knew I wanted vintage. I wanted a vintage ring. Um, so she sent him links and he picked from there, I yeah. guess. But the only issue, because here's the thing. <laughs> a vintage ring is cool. Because it, it wasn't until after I like received the ring that I started to have these thoughts. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, it's so beautiful. But it's from the 20s. It's like. Oh, shit, it's, old. it's actually from the 20s yeah. and it was like you know a, a jeweler said that they whatever they say when they officially say things and appraised appraised it was appraised they know that it's in the from the 20s mm -hmm. long story short um i it's if you have a family member that has jewelry and they pass it along to you or you know it's been in the family for mm -hmm. a long time that like has an heirloom it's an heirloom it yes. has specific meaning mm -hmm. you can think mm -hmm. of the people who wore it when you know totally. it. when you get a ring that's off like i think this came from an estate sale website Whoa. of jewelry yeah. and i'm staring at you know i've been wearing it for years and years yeah. and every time i look at it i'm like how did I end up with the stranger's ring? <laughs> and like, I feel like vintage engagement ring just translates into haunted ring. <laughs> I don't know who wore this. <laughs> I don't know why their family didn't keep this in the family. Where, what, what has happened since that lady's life who wore this? I'm assuming a lady in the twenties received oh this God. ring from <laughs> sure. her lover. And then at some point in time, mm. she became such a bitch mm -hmm. that the family did not want to keep it in the family. Like I just imagine a conversation happening at some point <laughs> decades later, she passes, you know, and, and a son in the family is like, I want to, I want to propose to my girl. And his mom's like, why don't you use Nana's ring? And he's like, well, we're still not sure Nana didn't kill grandpa. <laughs> so I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> and they're like, that stone has a lot of demons in it. Uh, and let's just get rid of it. And let's just put it out there in the world so that some other sad girl ends up with a demonic haunted ring. It's like rehoming. And there she is. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put sound effects of like, <laughs> like a thunderstorm yeah. above it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lice but anyway, the haunted ring, the haunted ring, like, uh, you know, and I don't know uh, what is it transferring to me? Uh, yeah. What is it doing? Uh, I don't know. So after you get married after five years, what are you going to do with it? When I get remarried? Well, yeah. when yeah. you get your new husband, when I get my new husband, I'll have a different ring. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know. and I guess I'll pawn it off to some other sad girl who wants it. Which one of you be cautious out She's there, the ladies. Wants the okay. Take it. I'll be take cautious. the diamond. I'm just saying watch out for uh, vintage drinks because you don't know what they hold. I think when they're restructured, yeah, they're fine. Steve. <laughs> Steve's really just, it's a, it's a fixed lens to, yeah. to be on Steve's side a little bit. It's a, he can't zoom in. Anyway, he doesn't have legs. Break, we're breaking the fourth wall here. Steve, you're doing great. Doing great uh, a little Steve. less Sudoku. Um, <laughs> hard to get good help <laughs> it really is really tell me about it is. okay so we should am i right man. Oof. Mm. anyway so we've reached the part of the podcast where we uh where, where we actually start where, is this the part of the podcast where we start and start and, <laughs> and Lace Larrabee, take one um <laughs> so no so uh we've reached the part of the podcast where we uh ask you our mm -hmm. hot comic for mm -hmm. your comic hottie which mm -hmm. is someone that's been doing uh, younger than you in comedy years that you admire yeah. um 
What's up? Who you got? Oh my God. This is uh, so awkward that y'all are putting me in this position because <laughs> it's I it's teach a comedy class that mm-hmm. both of you have taken. We, that's why we're hilarious. And hundreds of other people have yes. taken at this point. Yes. And I will be um, strung up in the town square if I don't say all. Can I? Has anyone said y'all? No. Uh, the people have alluded to it. Okay. Well, I'm going to straight up and say it. I I want to I want to push all the new laugh labbers who are out there, real trying. They're doing ambush comedy left and right. They're learning the ropes. Yeah. They might be meeting the love of their life. Who knows? Doubtful. Don't don't D- hang your cards. I doubt if they're dating a comedian. It's only don't. happened once. No I just shame. like try it's not like to. It's, just don't date a peer. Yeah. It's only ever happened once, and it happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> but I got a haunted ring out of it, so be careful. Um, I it can't all be. <laughs> But uh, you know what? I'm here with y'all. I'm going to say y'all. Y'all have Aww, worked your asses you. off. So I want to say my hot comics are Brandy and Lysandra because Thanks. not only did y'all take my full advice and say, keep working, keep going out there, be That's seen true. in the scene, yeah. um, you know, politely uh, support other people's shows. Okay. Don't be weird. Don't be hard to work with. Um, that's some free advice for everybody. Mm-hmm. If anyone's interested in the kinds of things I teach, but uh, I told y'all to do that yeah. and you did it. And you went out and not only did have y'all written more jokes and worked on yourselves as comics, you've gotten so much better. And y'all are running shows and have the cutest podcast in the city. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Liz. What? Is that money that you're sliding me? <laughs> yeah. You told Sorry. me it was going to be Venmo and it was going to be a lot more. Uh, so <laughs> I... Uh, I mean, that's just to get you started. <laughs> Just to get you home, ladies. <laughs> That's just a little taste. <laughs> it's a little it's coming to you. A little bit of tartar. My therapist is trying to get me spice. to be better about accepting compliments. So Good. thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I only talk to psychics. So <laughs> <laughs> it's true. She says that she sees a lot more of that coming uh, in my future. Mm, so mm-hmm. I'm, I am just gonna <laughs> Go just on. take it just accept it Ooh. yeah Let me um it. i need a psychic to look at this ring and find out i what's think that that actually is a really <laughs> good plan i think it really is yeah. i want to know the history yeah. behind this yeah we can make that happen because who knows it could be a cool hey lady. internets if you're a psychic that wants to analyze her ring yes yeah, oh my god if you i would specialize love it. in holding objects and doing that just dm me is that and a I'll thing value. yeah people do yeah mm-hmm. oh shit yeah like a like a ring medium. You guys can't see this, but I have a ton of tarot cards oh, really? in the back of the cameras. Um, huh. So yeah. I, this is my niche. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely say y'all because y'all are doing all Thank the things. You. You're doing all the things that people sit around and they think about doing and then they don't actually follow through with it because it feels like too much work and y'all are doing it. Thank you. Thank you. And doing well at it. Yeah, I'm trying. Okay. Well, on that really positive lovely note i'm speechless and you know i need to talk <laughs> but thank you check out thank lace you. love you all oh yeah yes uh thank yeah thank you so much for being thank here you. lace we love you thanks mm-hmm. for having me love you so much love y'all bye. both very proud bye, bye. bye. all right and what a time welcome back welcome back i mean i had a lot of fun i hope you all had great time as much fun with lace with our sweet lace and again we hope that she continues on at america's got talent yeah go check her uh, out go check her out please follow lace um at on instagram yep at she's lace the at lace Larrabee. Larrabee. yeah and if you're interested in taking any of the car comedy classes uh it's laugh lab comedy you can look uh yep. that up uh, all of the other things are going to be on the show notes but yeah so she offers some hybrid classes uh, she will be offering some hybrid classes in the future so if you don't live in the Atlanta area you can take them yeah. on, the, on the internet and she offers both female only as well as co um, co-ed. Co- co-ed classes and actually it's how Sandra and I met yeah, so it. it's a really, really great resource, especially again, if you're in the Atlanta area and, or for those hybrid classes, um, check them out and you get to hang out with Lace. And she's great. And she's, yes, yeah, she's so funny. And she helps, she helps punch up jokes because yeah. you know, she already knows she's brilliant, but then it's like, she, yeah. uh, she helps make everything better. Yeah. And the tips, there's one tip that I think I've brought taken away from her classes and you'll pay attention to this now since you're a comedy lover, mm-hmm. people who move the microphone stand. Oh yeah, people who move, uh, people who don't move the microphone yeah. stand. It's like you'll watch it on stage. People who, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's Pick interesting. It up and move it. Yeah, it's it's a confidence booster, and it is the one. It's the biggest thing. So you can learn more tips just like that in Lisa's class. Yeah, just little tiny tips. But, but also, she is with our 
Uh, Catherine Blanford and her have a podcast yep. called Cheaties. If you watch Catherine's episode, then you are watching this too. Yep. They co-host a Cheaties podcast. Again, I was on an episode. If you've been cheated on or if you, or want to get cheated on, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> want to know how to get away, with, know it, how to get away with it. Yeah. Mm, you want to do some brand? Either way, it's really funny. And you get to hear a bunch of people's stories about like either cheating on people or, mm-hmm. or being cheated on. Like oh, me. But cheaties podcast how about go take a listen and how about her comedy hotties us unexpected a real Uh, what honestly i mean it's a it's It's honestly an honor to be nominated but like happy to be here it's even better to win and i did not have a speech prepared for this i I did i talked to my therapist about this morning thank you No, but it's, I mean, it's um, it's wonderful. We're honored and thanks, Lace. Yeah, we you know, we we do this for you, the people. Truly, I do it for my dog, oh. our executive producer Rose. I'm um, a woman of the people. Yeah. I'll carry the people. She'll carry Rose. Yeah. You know. And Steve, how about give it up for yeah, Steve? Yeah, give it up for our, our camera guy. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for listening. Yeah. And yeah, really, uh, tune in to America's Got Talent. Uh, she if she makes it further then we are going to need your votes it's really cool to see if this is like the pinnacle for a live performer yep. to be able to have a chance to win number one a million dollars i'll be hitting her up if she wins that i'm gonna be like lace well you can ask for the money back that you paid yeah, her to listen. nominate us as a hottie so i saw the venmo request come through already she's quick <laughs> um wow she hasn't, she hasn't won the money yet she's a business woman <laughs> wow <laughs> fast with those fingers but she is gonna need support so yeah it get all like when if she goes forward or if she's already on whatever i can't tell the future i'm not a psychic but if she does go further uh we need we need support and yeah. that's the uh, because she would win also a live residency in, in vegas, vegas which is she incredible gets a chance, and that's amazing and then you can also say that like you saw her before yeah that's, you, that's you supported literally the, her before literally the whole point of this podcast is yeah. to get to know people as they're blowing up and for you to have those bragging rights so like yeah. this is your this is for you again for the people support lace for you or us or her or or her whatever the point is is that we love you we thank you thank for listening you. and if you've listened this far you oh are a fucking Lord. hero thank you god yeah. really truly this waste a little bit more of your time by telling you that i'm lysander vasquez and i'm brandy please Unger. follow us subscribe like tell us what uh what favorite taco size thing you um enjoy maybe fish sandwiches i uh, know it's it's a sexual reference bye bye